Hariyom Namaste. My name is Swami Manamurti. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about some inspiration that I've had over the years and some experiences and what's le led up to me making this video today. It possibly all started about 31 years ago. Obviously I was much younger then than I am today. 31 years ago in July, I was practicing a lot of intense sadhana. I'd been doing Hatha Yoga pretty intensely for about five years. That's Hatha Yoga, Asanas, Pranayamas, Mudras, Bandhas, and some Kriyas. And anybody who knows me from those days would, would uh, vouch for what I'm saying. That I felt like I was getting more and more involved with yoga, the philosophy. I was totally changing over those years. And I was in a way probably possessed by the, the yoga but it was you might say a good possession because w one day in one day in 1986 in July I woke up early in the morning probably about 3 30 in the morning and I was still laying in bed in a dark room and as I woke up I opened my eyes and with my eyes open, I saw Swami Satchananda Saraswati, who later on became my guru. You might say even then he was my guru, but I hadn't met him physically. So I had the darshan. And I'll explain that a little bit. It's a very strange phenomena, but it was very inspirational. He appeared, Swami Satchananda appeared from the waist up in front of me in colour and it was totally clear but, and I was looking at him I had my eyes open but and he was talking to me telepathically talking to me I knew he was talking to me but my mind couldn't move an inch left or right I couldn't even move my physical body an inch even my eyes could not move but my mind my mind was awake and my eyes were open and he was talking to me, Swamiji was talking to me. And I was receiving whatever he was instructing me to do. So this was an amazing experience and I thought it very auspicious that something like this was happening. So I got out of bed and went straight to do my sadhana. I sat down and I did some asana, I quickly got into my pranayama and then into my practice of a japa japa which i've been practicing for a couple of years which is a very slow breath with mantra in sushumna moving it through the pathway of sushumna but up until that time i'd never had any real experience of what really is sushumna so when i was practicing this breath, this very fine, relaxed, tranquil breath, very slow breathing. My breath became very extinguished, like I couldn't feel myself breathing at all. And in that instant, when my breath was not moving, then I noticed a very intense, acute feeling in the perineum, perineal region which I know now to be Muldar Chakra. It got very, very acute, very intense. And then it moved backwards into the spinal column in the sacral area, the sacrum, and connected with another source of energy, which was like a conduit of energy. And the energy started moving upwards. It was a very powerful experience and as I sat there my spine felt like it was locked upright 
I didn't know if my eyes were closed or open. All I knew was that this experience of energy was shooting up like electricity, very strong and powerful within my spinal cord. And then I started to lose awareness of my physical body and then the vision opened in my mind of clouds, clouds moving quickly from left to right. And that expansive vision became more and more intense and I started to move into that experience. And as that happened, I was losing awareness of my physical body totally losing awareness and traveling through this new dimension. You might say a portal open to me. And that I know now is more like the astral dimension. So it was a, a connection with this Sushumna and Kundalini energy, which I experienced for the first time, moved me into another dimension. And from that day forward till today, I'm totally amazed by that day. The experiences that it helped me glimpse. I'd say a glimpse because this is the experience that you have to get established in this awareness of the other dimension, you might say, and this physical dimension. But that was a glimpse, an inspiration for me. So. I decided then that I needed more guidance and I saved up my money for another couple of years. So this is in the days before the internet, 1986. So in those days, all I did was in my spare time, I kept fit, went to the beach, surfing and did yoga and family life and work. So in 1988, in April, I went to Bihar School of Yoga, Mongia, and met Swami Satchinanda, who was living in partial seclusion in Ganga Darshan building. This is a couple of months, probably two months, three months before he left permanently to live in seclusion at Rikia. And there was hardly any Westerners there, maybe two or three Westerners. Anyway, during that stay at the ashram, I met Swami Satchinanda uh, privately a number of times and we went over some of the experiences that I was having and Swamiji gave me some guidance that from what, what I should do and what he could see of me from what I experienced. Now, he was looking into his, himself in meditation and telling me things about what I should do. So apart from instructing me or giving me his blessings, he told me that I can continue with Kriya Yoga, but the most important thing for me was to be innocent. So 20 years or 30 years later, I'm still trying to work out this innocence, what it means. And I've had some glimpses of that since then through experiences with Swami Satchinanda, but I'll just move forward a few years to 1993. In uh, September in 1993, I decided I was pretty inspired, deeply inspired by Maha Avatar Babaji. I'd read autobiography of a yogi a few times by then and obviously I've been practicing Kriya Yoga for a number of years and I was really inspired by the Kriya Yoga and Babaji and Lahiri Marseille and other Kriya Yogis obviously the Swami Satchananda as well and so I, I lived about 100 miles from the bookshop in Sydney. So I boarded the train, traveled up to Sydney, got to the bookshop at about lunchtime. And then wh while I was there, I was looking at the books on Babaji. 
and going through them. And then a lady appeared next to me. She was standing next to me. She was about 70 years of age. I was probably mid thirties. And she was a very interesting lady, very highly intelligent, very highly spiritual. She started talking to me about Kriya Yoga, Kundalini, meditation, and we got on so well together, I could not believe how, how in tune I was with her. We talked non-stop for about five hours until the bookshop was closing and they virtually kicked both of us out of the shop at 5 p.m. when the shop was closing. So Barbara, the lady's name was Barbara White. She was from Tasmania. Now I'll just tell you the story. Before we parted ways, Barbara told me that the day previous, she was in her meditation room doing her meditation and she had a very deep experience, a darshan or vision materialization of Babaji who appeared to her and told Barbara to go to Adya Bookshop, there's someone I want you to meet. So Barbara told me that that person was me, that I after she met me, she told me this about Babaji. So then we parted ways. It was a very auspicious meeting. And then about a week later, I received some mail. I didn't know Barbara was going to write to me at all. But anyway, she sent me something that's very dear to me, which is here. This is a, a mandala which I'll, I'll share on YouTube and I'll share on, on Facebook to my friends that want to look at it. It's a very beautiful picture, mandala of lots and lots of very in-depth concepts all put together in this mandala. And Barbara told me that she'd received hundreds of these hundreds of these mandalas in her mind's eye and then from the picture that she received in her mind's eye she drew what she was receiving so this is what she received through her mind's eye and she was telling me this was from Babaji Maha Avatar Babaji now this mandala stayed with me for a number of years at home and I looked at it, tried to work out what it was all about because as you'll see if you blow up this picture that I'll share with you, as you go through here there's lots of numbers as we go through the different dimensions, frequencies, frequencies from the physical being to the spiritual being to the absolute. 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 5, 10 to the power of 8, etc. 10 to the power of 108, 10 to the power of 1080 to the super mind. Now she, Barbara was very obviously inspired by the likes of some of the great Yogi Sri Aurobindo and Babaji. But years later, in 2012, when I went back to India and went through the Himalayas and I met up with some of my Kundalini Research Project colleagues in uh, Delhi, there's one very important friend of ours, um, colleague, Dr. Subratha Kaviraj from Calcutta. PhD scientist, physicist, he's had a, a good look at this yantra and he's written a very good summary of what it all means and I hope to publish it soon in a book that I was preparing up until a couple of years ago. I'd nearly finished this book about the Kundalini Research Project but one of the reasons I wanted to share this 
experience that Barbara White, the author of this Yantra or Mandala, how she followed her intuition, followed the inner instructions. So for a spiritual seeker, this is very important to follow your inner guidance. So for me, that's very important because Babaji's deeply inspiring me again. So I wanted to share my experience of, of Babaji, how Babaji came into my life and this Yantra, which has come to me through Barbara White from Tasmania. Hurry on, Tatsat.